We started Satelliot uh, four years ago. Uh, at that moment, uh, there was a huge problem with IoT connectivity everywhere in the world. 85% of the world has no mobile connectivity, and this means that it's uh, just in critical situations uh, you may connect something out uh, of this coverage. 5G IoT is the solution. Uh, we, we really believe that uh, connecting on a standard device that costs uh, 5 to $10, dollars, it changed completely the way people will use and we digitalize uh, on these places. And now we are launching the first uh, 5G IoT satellite. What does this mean? This means that uh, with uh, the same device that today uh, uh, you are having connectivity inside uh, uh, the city, you have connectivity everywhere in the world, directly to satellites. Three, two, one. The satellite is launched with a SpaceX. This is just the first one. We are launching uh, for more these years and up to 256 satellites, which will be the first 5G IoT satellite constellation to deliver full coverage everywhere in the world. Satellite IoT, standard narrowband IoT from space. Everything, everywhere, connected. Good morning, everybody, and from everywhere. Okay, we are back here again uh, today. I have the feeling that will be the day. Okay, finally, the, that our satellite will be launched into space. This is an adventure that we started in 2018 uh, when we created Satellite with the aim of uh, deliver IoT connectivity everywhere and for everyone. I just said it. Uh, Yesterday, okay, this will be the first 5G IoT satellite of the world that will deliver the connectivity directly to the IoT devices. Today, we are here with uh, Marco Guadalupe, our CTO, that will explain the details of the mission that today we are starting. Thank you very much, Jama. Let's see so some, some slides that can, uh, can help us to understand the concept of this, uh, of this mission. Let's see, let's see. Um, first of all, Everybody is talking about 5G. 5G is a, is a lot of things. What Satellite is trying to do is focusing on a concrete use case. We are going to offer a solution for massive IoT. Massive IoT means connecting every object around the world from everywhere with a global coverage. We are trying to do that following this standard, using low power consumption devices, cost effective devices, low data transfer data, and mostly we are focusing on the little application because we identified that this market is quite important and this kind of solution can be called based on our approach to the satellite space industry. So please, let's see uh, where we are now. After four years of working, in the next slide, I want to show you, this is the amazing process we followed during the last year. We started in 2018 with the concept of studying how a solution under the standard 5G can be offered through satellite. We are a member of the 3GPP. 3GPP is a big organization where many, many companies are pushing to have a global standard solution that can connect an object, not only from terrestrial network, but also from space. In that adventure, in that study, in that, during this year, Satellite was one of the main contributors of the standard from the space industry. And today uh, we are arrived until uh, 23. The standard is a reality. Everybody's talking now about the release of 17. During the Mobile World Congress, it was a hot topic, and that is where Satellite is. And basically, we are launching now the, the first uh, Satellite Zero. This, uh, this, uh, this satellite will offer a 5G IoT coverage extension to mobile operator. It will be a validation of the key technology enabler in space. Under this uh, standard, we just follow this standard. We are going to validate to extend the 5G coverage for mobile operators in that zone. That zone means where there is no coverage in the sea, in the desert, in rural area, everywhere in the pole. We are going to uh, connect end user devices that follow this standard. We are doing a roaming agreement with the mobile operator using a seamless way, just the standard roaming agreement. And we are going to transmit and receive IoT end to end short messages from one end to the other. Let's see the next. This is our reference architecture. This is uh, how we approach the project from the first day. We are going to work with small platform at the moment, CubeSat form factor. We are going to work with a payload that's called regenerative payload. We have an onboard computer in our satellite that can manage the messages that we receive or we have to send. 
they're going to fly in low Earth orbit around uh, 500, 600 kilometers. As I said, we are going to follow 3 GPP and IoT re 17 NTN standard. And every connection we are going to do with mobile operator are under GSMA 3 GPP roaming uh, standard approach. And inside this satellite, we have the main innovation of satellite. This is a standard solution, but, but we, are, we take the leverage of having an onboard computer in our satellite, the regenerative payload, and we implement a solution called store and forward that allow us to have a big advantage compared to the rest of company. That's allowed to have a low density network of ground station and offer a solution to delay tolerant IoT application. This solution is so flexible that today is delay tolerant, but tomorrow will be a very real time continuous coverage for all the objects we can cover around the globe. And that's our solution. That's our satellite. We are going to launch now in April. We are going to do the commissioning. And during the rest of the next uh, few months, we are going to execute three validation phase. The end-to-end -end technology validation phase one, phase two, and phase three. During this validation, we are going to test all the main elements of, this, of the solution. Of course, it's big technology enablers and then all the future of the standard. We are going to talk a lot about that. We are going to contribute to the standard. We are going to contribute to the organization that are in charge of validating devices, of validating the intervention, validating the roaming. And that is where our solution will give a big advantage. Let's see and go ahead. Thank you very much, guys, to follow us and go ahead to the launch. OK? Let's follow. Let's go right for the launch, OK? This is the first of a bunch of satellites that is going to work this year. Uh, before the end of the year, we're going to launch four more satellites. This would be uh, the first satellite 5G IoT constellation of the world, okay, in order to connect everywhere and for everyone. And uh, let's connect directly with the SpaceX. Today will be the day. Sure. Our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. We're flying some really cool payloads on this mission, including several different types of Earth observation spacecraft, collecting greenhouse gas emission data, hyperspectral imaging, student research projects, and orbit changing vehicles. It's pretty incredible how even the smallest satellites can make meaningful contributions to take care of planet Earth and our efforts to visit other worlds. We're looking forward to providing a great ride to space for these 51 payloads on board today in just a few minutes from now. We're currently T minus four minutes and 50 minutes, 50 seconds from liftoff. And on your screen is the payload fairing and the second stage. In about 40 seconds, we should see the TE clamp arms, which are right below the fairing, open up in preparation for the strong back to slightly away from the rocket until the hydraulics pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 at T0 as it lifts off the pad. The TE or transport director is the structure that provides liquids, gases, electric connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. At this point, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen at around T minus three minutes when the when we will hear the call out for liquid oxygen load completion on stage one and around T minus two minutes when we hear the call out for liquid oxygen load completion on stage two. It is a bit cloudy, but the clamp arms have begun to open. And the strong back will, is beginning to recline away from the vehicle. And we should be hearing the call out for liquid oxygen load completion coming up on the first stage in about 17 seconds from now. And then at the T minus two minute mark, we should hear that same call out for stage two. Stage one lock load complete. And there's that call out right there for liquid oxygen load completion on stage one. Uh, 
Now, the next event coming up will be at the T-minus two-minute mark, and that's when prop loading will complete on second stage, and that will conclude prop loading for Falcon 9. At that point, we will have one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen on the vehicle. That event is coming up here in just about 20 seconds. Currently just waiting for the call out for Liquid oxygen loading, conclusion on second stage. Stage two, lock flow complete. And perfect timing, there's that call out. Now that we're done loading prop onto the vehicle, we will begin to vent out the liquid oxygen line on the transporter rector. And there you can see there's a better view, that venting happening there from the TE. Next up will be Falcon 9 and startup at the T minus one minute mark. That's where the internal flight computers take over the launch countdown. This vehicle is autonomous. So starting at the T minus one minute mark, the vehicle will be fully autonomous through the mission. We will also begin to pressurize the vehicles for launch at the T minus one minute mark. Falcon is in startup. And great call out. Now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. LD is go for launch. Great news. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with all 51 payloads on Transporter 7. T minus 30 seconds. plus 30 seconds into flight and Falcon 9 has cleared the tower at Space Launch Complex for East. We're currently throttling down the engines in preparation for Max Q. Max Q is the maximum power and telemetry. Max Q is the maximum aerodynamic pressure the vehicle will see on ascent. That's the largest structural load yeah, on the Falcon vehicle. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Good callouts there and we are coming up on Max Q in just a few seconds from now. Great news, we've passed through Max Q. Now with that, we do have a few events coming up here back to back. That will be Miko stage separation, stage one flip, SES one. And back chill has started. And the start of the boost back burn. Now Miko is main engine cutoff. That's where we will shut down all of those engines that you are seeing lit up on your screen. That will help slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. Stage one will begin to make its journey back to Earth with stage one flip and the boost back burn. And the second stage will ignite the MVAC engine for the first time with SES one or second stage engine start one. And as a reminder, once we have stage separation, we should be able to see the shorter nozzle in there. You can actually see it on your screen. Again, we are flying a shorter nozzle for this mission. And you can see it there on your screen. And we are preparing for a few events coming up. Miko, stage separation, S1 flip, 
for stage one flip, SES one, and the boost back burn on the first stage. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And incredible views there. We've had Miko stage separation. The first stage vehicle has performed its flip maneuver and has started up its boost back burn. And on your right hand screen, what an incredible view. You could see the shorter MVAC nozzle there and that MVAC engine burning extremely bright on the screen. And we are coming up on fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. Perfect timing. You saw the fairing have separating from the second stage. As they make their way back down to earth, we will attempt to recover them. And again, just incredible views on your screen. On the left-hand side, you can see the boost back burn for the first stage vehicle. Stage one boost back shut down. And great call out. That concludes the boost back burn of the first stage as you saw that engine shut down. And on your right hand screen, that MVAC engine is still burning bright. Now the next major milestone coming up will be the entry burn on the first stage, which is scheduled to occur around the T plus six minute mark. We're currently in our first of four MVAC burns, and this burn should last until about T plus eight minutes and 19 seconds. And as Jesse mentioned, the next milestone will be the first stage entry burn, which is coming up in about two minutes from now. For today's mission, unlike typical Falcon 9 missions, we'll be performing a single engine entry burn and a three engine landing burn on the first stage after stage separation. This is due to the change of the second stage engine performance with the shorter nozzle that you can see right there on your screen. So switching up the number of engines we let up, light up during these two milestones on the booster during descent will allow us to more efficiently land on LZ4. We have performed similar types of burns previously, most commonly on Falcon Heavy side boosters. This will, however, be the first Falcon 9 first stage to perform these burns with this changed engine configuration to land, trajectory. to land back on land. You heard that good call out that they are on a nominal trajectory. But be sure to keep an eye out during both entry and landing burn to see if you can see the difference based on how many engines are lit up. We should be hearing the call out for entry burn on stage one in about 20 seconds from now, where engine nine will relight. Stage one entry burn startup. There's that call out. You can see that engine nine has relit for entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. And we have had stage a, one FTS is saved. And we have had a successful entry burn. As I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover this booster for the 10th time today and are targeting a land landing on LZ4, which is not too far from the launch pad. The first stage has one more burn left, which is the landing burn. During landing burn, three of the Merlin engines will relight engine